In the 1970s, at school in Cork, I had to study a foreign language. My school didn't teach French, it taught Spanish. Ours was a Catholic seminary school, and we were all taught Spanish in the hope that one day, some of us boys might join the missionaries in Peru. I did not become a missionary in Peru. Our Spanish teacher told us to call him the master, El Maestro. El Maestro taught us about Ireland's historical links with Spain. That in the 17th century, during the Protestant Reformation, the English in Ireland banned Catholic boys from studying for the priesthood. So at that time, Catholic boys were sent abroad to be educated in Spain, sent to a famous Irish college in the town of Salamanca. The thought of being sent to school in Spain seemed to me rather exciting. El Maestro tried to teach us Spanish using a school textbook called Living Spanish. This is my copy of that textbook. The title Living Spanish was about the only living thing about it. Our textbook was published in 1949, and this is evident from the front cover. On the cover is a drawing of a man riding a donkey. My introduction to Spanish and Spain was the two world of El Campesino, the rural peasant, and Los Burros, traditional donkeys. During my school days, I never actually got to take a trip to Spain. Our family couldn't afford to take foreign holidays. The closest I got to Spain was when I opened my stamp album. I turned to the page on Spain where I could inspect my four meager stamps from Spain, three of which were of Spain's head of state, General Franco. I noticed the pictures on stamps in my album were disproportionately of men, which may explain why my stamp album was called Gay Venture. After I left school and reached my 21st birthday, I was able to travel outside of Ireland, to travel for the first time to Europe. And to where did I book my first foreign trip? I booked a trip to Spain. Arriving at the airport in Madrid at immigration control, I handed to the immigration officer my passport, this passport. I possessed one of the earliest Irish passports with the maroon cover and with the words written on the cover, European community. Those were the days. The immigration officer took my passport, looked at my photo, looked at me, and flicked passport pages to the first page. Then he reached for an ink stamp and pressed the ink stamp against the blank page. And it reads, Direccion Estado Fronteras. Uh, 9th of July. 1985, Madrid, Baracas, Entrada. My first immigration stamp in my first passport. I would from then on collect these immigration stamps like I collected stamps in my stamp album. I must have felt this first trip abroad was significant as in Madrid, I bought what was called a cuaderno escolar, a student copy book. This actually has student copy book written on the bottom, even though it's got Walt Disney images on the cover. And this is the copy book in which I wrote a daily record, a sort of diary of my first foreign trip. Tuesday, the 9th of July, 1985. Madrid, blinding sun, weight of rucksack, underlined. Why was my rucksack so heavy? It was additionally heavy because I was carrying some dried food. More about that later. According to Living Spanish, Spain, the land of peasants, was very poor and I didn't want to end up hungry. Clutching my copy of Living Spanish, I ventured into Madrid of the 1980s with the vocabulary of the rural 1950s. Living Spanish didn't have the words for underground metro train. I was hopelessly lost in time and place. 
Wednesday, the 10th of July, 1985, eight out, 600 pesetas, paella valenciana, comma, rice, brackets, yellow. At least I wasn't starving. But yellow rice, I had never seen yellow rice in Ireland. So that was what saffron was for. Now that I was fortified, I was ready to venture into the heart of Spain, into Castilla and La Mancha, to walk in the steps of Don Quixote. I took a bus to the edge of Madrid, and on the side of a dual carriageway, I extended my arm and raised my thumb. In the afternoon heat, I waited. Diary entry, Friday the 12th of July. Took two hours before I got my first hitch in the town of Maqueda. Couldn't get a lift out of Maqueda. Took the bus back to Madrid. That's when I abandoned any attempts to walk in the steps of Don Quixote. External entry. Missed the train to Toledo because I confused Llegadas, means arrivals, with Salidas, which means departures. From Toledo, I posted a postcard to my parents. Dear ma'am, dad and all, so far so good. The country is very stimulating. Unfortunately, this part of Spain is extremely hot, but I stay in the shade as much as possible. Love, Richard. On the postcard is a postage stamp, but it is not a stamp of dictator General Franco. It is a stamp of King Juan Carlos. I had traveled, but so too had Spain. Spain had become a modern European democracy. I realized that El Maestro had induced me to a Spain under Franco, which no longer existed. What else had El Maestro misled us on? I wondered, did the Irish college in Salamanca that he told us about it, did it even exist? Saturday, the 13th of July, 1985. Took the train to Salamanca. Slept without a tent in a camping site. Very cold. Visited a new cathedral and the Colegio Arzobispo Fonseca Irlandeses. Colegio Irlandeses. So El Maestro hadn't made it up. There really was an Irish college in Salamanca. Tuesday, the 16th of July, 1985. Took the train to Irún. Irún is the border crossing between Spain and France. At the frontier barrier, the border guards noticed I was carrying a copy of Living Spanish, if I can just find where I put it, and which I had a minute ago, and which I cannot, oh, here it is, here's a copy of Living Spanish. Um, so, I opened my book at chapter 25, a chapter called In La Frontera. And I showed those border guards the funny drawing of two carabineros, border guards, wearing hats just like theirs, hats which looked like upturned basins. Unfortunately, they were not amused. One of them pointed to my rucksack and said the word aduana, a word I knew from living Spanish which meant customs. I opened my rucksack and they started to empty it. And what did they find? Que es esto? Asked the carabinero. He held up a packet, a small packet of dried food, a packet of lentils. Son lentejas, I answered. Las lentejas, they gasped. The two carabineros burst out laughing at a young Irishman who carried a bag of dried lentils across Spain in the summer heat on his first foreign trip. 